Hey folks, welcome back to another video. If you're like me, you're probably wondering why the price of luxury trucks just keeps increasing year over year. And also, you know, what do they really offer? Well, behind me, I have a 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD four wheel drive, high country trim pickup truck. And we're gonna use it as an example to understand what does this high price tag get you? What features and functionality does it have? And how does it drive and what's it like to live with? And ultimately, is it worth the price? So with all that being said, let's get to it. So here we are in the Silverado's cabin and, um, you know, just off the bat, I'm, you know, 6'1", you know, like 230 pounds. There is so much space in here. I mean, I feel like, I feel small in this cabin and that's true of every position, whether I'm talking about front seats or in the back. And that's a really nice feeling for me because I'm, I'm just over the years, just gotten really used to just being cramped and that's just kind of been my normal. But in this truck, it's like being in an open environment and I mean, it's, it's a luxury. You're, you're paying for that as a luxury and I think that's the biggest compliment I can give the interior because space is at a premium. Now, in terms of materials, what's nice is there's these really nice soft touch leathers and then there's some like more durable hard leathers. And I find like they put the right leathers in the right places for the right reasons. So here on the armrest, it's a really nice looking armrest with the, the alternating like, like sort of Java brown uh, perforated leather with the more durable stuff on the sides. This is where you're going to be rubbing a lot when you're just you know, leaning over or whatever on road trips. But on the steering wheel, the leather here is extremely soft and, and it just feels like high quality and, you know, makes it feel special, which is great. Also for 24, this display here uh, is really, it, it's extended. I think it's a, a 14 inch here. It, it's nice. It really looks great. I think a lot of GM products now are really getting some high quality screens and it matches really, really nice with the, the screen behind the steering wheel, which is great. Um, all of the buttons here are really, really nice and large and prominent. Um, it's one of those, you know, typical GM interiors where you, you see everything it makes sense on its placement and you understand what it does. Not every car accomplishes that like you might believe, but this is really, really great. I also do like that there's another bar here to help me get in and out of the vehicle. You do get this center armrest here, which drops down and gives you a couple extra spots to put your drinks or whatever you got. Um, yeah, overall, it's pretty nice back here. Um, also, behind the seats here, you have easy access to the cubby's right behind the seat, which is nice. And these seats do fold up and give you some storage underneath as well. Um, yeah, I mean, really well thought out. You get hooks here for your dry cleaning. <laughs> it's like, it really is designed for a family to do family things. And you know, this back seat is probably the best back seat I've sat in in a long time. So even though the interior of this truck has some really, really nice, uh, materials used it also has some cheap stuff in mixed in right so and, and it's usually placed in places where you're not going to notice it so much but right here it's minimal because it's just really a stripe above and below 
don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's, that's probably the cheapest plastic they use. It's also on the top of the doors a little bit and at the bottom of these door cards. Um, but other than that, everything does feel pretty nice. Um, you know, it, it, it does feel premium, premium enough to like warrant um, being an upper trim, which is nice. But also what I really like is you get, you know, your traditional glove box, which is, um, you know, pretty decent size. And then I like this. This is like a hidden little compartment right here. Um, I, and I don't know. I mean, you could put, I mean, not, there's not a lot of storage here. It looks like you could put like a foot long sub or something, <laughs> but like, I like that it's there because, you know, it's one of those touches where, if you're going on a long trip and you just have stuff to put places, it's it's nice that you know you've got something hidden out of the way. And subsequently, on the flip side, something that isn't out of the way is right behind the screen right here. There's a little pocket here where you could put stuff too. Obviously, it's out and exposed, but what I like is you could put an iPad there if you wanted to. Um, you know, you could put pens or whatever, some something for quick access. It's it is out of the way, but still visible. It's just a lot of the thought to detail, which really interests me about um, how designers create these interiors because they're listening to customer feedback and they're paying attention to what people actually use in their daily lives. And so to see it incorporating in, that's really, really great. You do get some great cubby spaces throughout the vehicle. Right here, there is a nice little spot and there's one on the other side too where you could slide in your phone. You do have cup holders, uh, tray table that comes out. This is very deep right here, so you can get really almost anything you want in there. You got your uh, phone chargers. Um, you also have the rear view mirror here that actually ties into the camera system. So you, you can, especially if you're towing, I think what's great is to use the camera rear view versus just the regular dimmed rear view is that, you know, you have a better understanding of what's going on with whatever you're trailering. And that's not only important for your load, it's also a safety feature. So I like that. Some stuff that I'm not super thrilled about is actually really more in the seating position. You know, these seats are nice, but they don't give you the adjustment that you would expect out of a higher trim vehicle um they you know they do have they are electric so you have like your traditional up down left right forward back uh, a little bit of lumbar support but that's about it besides having nice screens both on the dash cluster itself and of course the infotainment what i really like is their 360 degree cameras which um, come with the technology package with which is what this truck has and it allows you even to have a really great view of your tow hitch. So, you know, if you're if you're going to be backing up, if anybody watching this has never actually tried to hook up a regular truck to a, a trailer of any sort, it's quite challenging. And you know, you get better at it over time. But with a vehicle like this, you know, just having like that trailer assistance as you're backing up and really having that downward angle right on the trailer, you can make sure to hook up quickly and easily the first time versus a lot of going forward and backwards, checking to see how close you are, readjusting, all that stuff. I've been there, I've done that. I'm glad those days are behind us. So huge thumbs up for me on that kind of stuff. Let's take a closer look at just the side mirrors on this truck because they are kind of an engineering marvel. So let me explain. Yes, these do move out because you want to be able to, you know, see better when you're trailering something wide. So that's great. Yes, they do fold in so that way you can fit better into tight spots, which is great. But they do a lot more than that. For example, uh, there are LED lights in the front here. So at night, people can see you coming. It also gives an indication of how wide you are. So, you know, that's a, that's a safety thing. Um, there's also a light right here, which you could turn on. These are like fog lights facing directly back. So at night, you know, especially when you're driving and you want to see what's going on behind you, or maybe you're at a campsite, you can just flip those on and, and look in your rearview mirror or your side mirror and be able to see what's going on. I think that's a neat little touch. We're not done yet though. When you open the door at night, there's a puddle light underneath here, which lights your way, which is great also for these uh, folding uh, steps, which is good. 
Um, also, there is a camera right here at the bottom, which is part of the 360 uh, camera technology built into the truck. And you do have two separate mirrors here. The bottom one is convex, which means it's a wide angle lens. In other words, you get a better view uh, that's more spread out. The top is your typical uh, side view. And this is heated so that way you don't have to worry about condensation or maybe you're in the cold and the snow, something like that. And last but not least, you do have this little indicator right there, which helps with uh, lane change assist. So quite a lot going on here in this luxury truck just from the side pods. I mean, that's, it, it, you can't really ask for more. <laughs> All right, so we are definitely on a dirt road at the moment and this thing feels like it's made out of one solid piece of metal. Even though we're being rocked around, there's no rattles or shakes or anything in the cabin whatsoever. Testament to the engineers at GM and, and Chevy. By the way, as a part of this tech package, you also get a really big heads up display. And I don't know if you could see it, but Basically, it gives you really good information, your speed, the posted speed limit if it has it, and also how close you are by time duration to the vehicle ahead of you. What's nice about that is you really get the opportunity to be aware um, of your surroundings in a way that, you know, sometimes, you know, with all the stuff going on, especially if you're like towing or something, you know, we can lose sight of. And so it's just an extra, extra set of eyes, not a bad thing. So with this Duramax Turbo V8 diesel, you've got almost a thousand foot pounds of torque. I don't know why they didn't go to a thousand, but it's like, it's just shy. And you feel it because you roll onto the throttle even a little bit and this thing just skyrockets forward. It, it's, it's amazing. And honestly, even at freeway speeds, you roll onto the, onto the throttle and when it downshifts, you're gone. I mean, this moves like a sports car. It is very impressive. So as far as the suspension is concerned, it is interesting because with such a heavy vehicle, these Rancho shocks, uh, the anti-roll bars, um, just the setup of the alignment work really, really well to keep this thing not only in line, but to actually really deal well with the weight in terms of body roll through a corner. Um, it, it just does a great job. I mean, I think it's like one of those situations where like a bus these days might handle like a sports car. Um, I mean, that's sort of an interesting term, right? But it does kind of start to feel that way. This truck is in that vein. I mean, it feels really capable for what it is. On top of that, you gotta think, this is built for towing. I mean, legitimately, this thing could tow a house if it needed to. So the suspension has to be really stout to be able to manage those types of forces and I think it does a really really good job of doing so. Now there is one qualm and here it is. I am on the brakes, I am still braking and I am finally stopped-ish. Okay now I'm stopped. You know it's no secret that when you have a heavy vehicle that weighs a lot it's just going to be difficult to manage uh, under braking and man this truck is it definitely feels like you can overwhelm the brakes really easily I don't know why these brakes aren't better though because I don't have a, a full truck I don't have you know a, 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 a trailer attached I don't this is as light as it gets and yet I'm overwhelming the brakes uh, just on a country road so overall, I think this thing drives really well. Um, the ride can be a little bit spotty and harsh at times because of these shocks, but you know, it does have capabilities um, to be able to go on some dirt roads and stuff. And that's good to see. You have skid plates underneath to protect your uh, fundamental areas like the oil pan and all that. So that's, that's a huge plus with this Z71 off-road package. But you know, ultimately I think what makes this high country uh, trim really unique and special is the balance you're getting from all the different packages because 
it feels luxury enough in here to give you that special feeling. This isn't a work truck, right? Uh, at the same time, you have technology here like, you know, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can listen to your Spotify. Um, you know, you've got uh, really um, great tire pressure sensors that give you temperature as well as pressure. I mean, there's just a lot of things built in that are really unique and helpful um, from a technology perspective to actually feel like you can conquer anything thrown at you. And then on top of all of that, you know, you've got the Allison 10 speed transmission, which is awesome and legendary. You've got all the torque to be able to haul anything you want. And this thing does pretty well on gas. Uh, I'm gonna put the, the uh, stats up here so you can see, but you know, it's a diesel and it's giving you exactly what you're asking for, which is lots of power and really good gas mileage. Um, on top of all of that, look, I mean, this is a truck that's balancing all of these separate things in a way that's unique. All right, guys, so that concludes the review of the 24 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD high country pickup. And wow, what a truck that this thing is. I mean, it pretty much capitalizes on every single promise that it makes. It is a great luxury truck. I mean, it just is super comfortable and cozy, feels special inside, great use of materials. It is really good on fuel efficiency. I mean, I guess you should expect that out of a diesel, but uh, you know, I mean, surprising considering this thing weighs so much that it does so well on fuel, even with all of its capabilities. And then of course it's practical. And let's just be honest. I mean, this is a Chevy, you know, supposedly Chevy is less of a grade than the GMC version, but if you had blindfolded me and told me this is a GMC, I would have believed you. This thing is screwed together so well. No rattles, no shakes, no nothing. It is a solid block of metal just carved out into a truck. <laughs> so all of these things are great. Now, there's a couple cons though. The first con, well, it's the size. If you don't have a use case for it where if you're not you know seriously towing like loads frequently or have a giant family or live in the country or texas where it's like wide open and spread open like spread out you're going to find it difficult to live with on the daily because it is so large you're going to be threading this needle in between parking structure parking lots and cars coming at you on two-way roads and it can get stressful but that's not even the biggest con. The biggest con is the price tag. I mean, yes, trucks have gotten expensive over the years, but this thing, as tested, comes in just below 90 grand. 90,000 USD as of today. And that's if you can get one at sticker. So that's a lot of dough. So again, if you don't have a use case for this, save your money, go find something else, live within your means. I'm not a financial planner or anything, trust me. But what I can say is, if you don't have a need for it, there's a lot of other things that'll probably make you happy for less. All right, guys, that's about it. So, uh, I'm, of course, I'm going to ask: please like, share, and subscribe. I know it's annoying, but you know that's how YouTube works. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, that's what I need, so that way I can make a business case for it. That being said, guys, thank you for watching to this point. Like, share, and subscribe. Comments down below, as always. Catch you guys in the next one.